Oh, this is Mr. Hassan's math channel. I'm answering now question number two from the January 2024 Mechanics M1 paper. Um, this question is from the LXL International A-Level Board. And we have a question here. It looks like about momentum. Figure two shows two particles A and B moving in opposite directions on a smooth horizontal surface. No friction. Particle A has a mass of five kilograms and B X kilograms. The particles collide directly. Immediately before the collision, the speed of A is 3 meters per second and the speed of B is X meters per second. Immediately after the collision, the speed of A is 1 meters per second and its direction of motion is unchanged. So it's going in the same direction as it was before. It's just going slower, that's all. Immediately after collision, the speed of B is 1.5 meters per second. Find the value of X and the magnitude of the impulse exerted on A by B in the collision. So let's just keep this um, diagram down here so we don't have to keep scrolling. So we know that before the collision, so I'm going to write the information before on top and the information after underneath so we can use conservation of momentum and I'm going to define my direction of positive in this direction according to uh, my calculation, what I'm going to do. So now A before is got a speed of 3 meters per second and B has got a speed of X meters per second in this direction. After the collision, A's speed is 1 meters per second, but the direction is the same as before. And of course, if A is going in that, that direction after the collision, B must also be going in that direction at 1.5 meters per second. So now what we're going to do is we're going to set up our conservation of linear momentum. And what you've got to be very careful about in this type of question is the fact that we're taking this direction to the right in our diagram as positive. So therefore, you have to be careful about your signs. So the total momentum before would be the mass times velocity of A, which is 5, times positive 3. Always think about the signs in your head when you're doing this. It's very important. Very easy to make mistakes on this. And B, it's going to be X times negative X, because this X is in this direction. We've taken that direction as positive in our calculations. So it's going to be X times negative X, and that's equal to the total momentum after the collision, which is going to be 5 times positive 1 plus x times positive 1.5. Okay, so this is going to give you 15 minus x squared equals 5 plus 1.5x. So we see, see we're going to have a quadratic equation here, x squared and x terms. So let's make it 0 on this side. So we're going to add x squared to both sides. We're going to have um, 1.5x over here, and we're going to have 5 minus 15, which is negative 10, equals 0. Now, for me to solve this, I'll get rid of the fraction. If I multiply by 2, then this will become 3. So I'll have 2x squared plus 3x minus 20 equals 0. I'm going to check to see if I can factorize. I like to use this window uh, to help me factorize. So I, it helps me to split the middle term, basically. So the 2x squared goes over here. The constant term goes in, th in this box over here. You find two numbers that multiply to give you the same as these two, which is negative 40x squared, and those two numbers must give you this 3 as a sum. So if it's negative 40, one has to be positive, one has to be negative. And think of all the ways of getting 40. 40 times uh, 4 times 10, um, and you've got, um, that doesn't work, 5 times 8 is 40. 5 times 8, we've got a difference of 3, that's good. So it's going to be 8x and negative 5x. They multiply to give you 40x squared, negative. And when you add them, you get plus 3x. So I can put them anywhere I want. For example, I could put the plus 8x here and the minus 5x there. Now I can take out the common factor from any of the rows or columns I want to. So I'm going to take out the common factor of 2x from this column. And I know that 2x times this number must give me 2x squared, so that must be an x. And 2x times this number must give me 8x, so that must be a 4. And x times this number gives me minus 5x, so that must be a minus 5. And you can check that this is the sum of the product of those two. Good, so we have now factorized this. You have uh, 2x minus 5 times x plus 4. So this is an alternative way of splitting the middle term. It's the same thing, basically, but just a visual kind of way of doing it. So now we have two values of x x is going to be minus 5 over 2, and x equals negative 4. Um, x equals positive 5 over 2, sorry, and x equals negative 4. Now, what we can see here is we know that x is going to be 
something which must be um, negative. Why? Because we know that um, it's going to be going in this direction, which we call negative. Right? So it can't be um, 5 over 2. It can't be 5 over 2 because that would be a positive value. Right? So uh, what else does it say here about it? Find the value of x. So x must be 5 over 2. So x is equal to 2.5. So that means this has a mass of 2.5 kilograms and that speed is 2.5 going in that direction. Okay, so now it says find the, this is A. Well, B says find the magnitude of the impulse exerted on A by B. Okay, now what I would do here, supposing we made a mistake in A, very likely, very possible for someone could, could it's, you know, not, not too difficult to make a mistake. Now, B, if we use our answers for A, all right, and we find out the change of the momentum of B, okay, um, if we find out the change of momentum of B, that would be the magnitude of the impulse exerted on A, right? Um, but in case we've done something wrong, the best thing to do is use A, because we know it's the information about it beforehand given in the question. So if I find the change of momentum of A, that will be equal, the impulse, that will be the impulse exerted on A, which will be equal and opposite, which will basically be what we have to find, actually. That's it. Okay? So we need just the magnitude of the impulse. So even if it was we found the change of momentum of B, it would be the same as a change of momentum of A. Okay? The impulse will be the same, just opposite directions. And we want just the magnitude. So the one that has more information about it, that's the one to use in case you've made a mistake with the other one. And let's have a look. So we're going to see the change of momentum of A. Okay, so we have the impulse is equal to the change in momentum. So it's M V minus U. Okay, in this case, the mass of A is uh, 5 kilograms. So that's a 5. We can say the final speed of A after the collision was 1 meter per second in the positive direction. And the initial speed before the collision, okay, as we can see from here, was 3 meters per second in the positive direction. So we can say the impulse, therefore, is the mass, which is 5, times the change in velocity, which is 1 minus 3. That's going to be 5 times minus 2, which is 10. And that is impulse measured in Newton force times time, Newton seconds. Okay, so that's Newton seconds, and that is the impulse exerted, okay, on A by B on the collision, in the collision. Now, if we wanted to make sure that we got the answer for the first part right, we could take X as the value we got 2.5 and 2.5, and we could work out the impulse, okay, or the change in momentum in B. It has to be the same as the change in momentum of A, so because the impulse is equal and opposite. Okay, so let's try and do that. M times V minus U. So that's going to be 2. This is going to be 2.5. Uh, the final velocity was 1.5, okay, in the positive direction. And the initial velocity was 2.5 in the negative direction. So it's going to be like this. So you end up with 2.5 times. That's going to be 1.5 plus 2.5. That's going to be 4. And 4 times 2.5 is going to be 10 Newton seconds. So we know that we have got the right answer because the impulses are the same. Okay? So um, we know that this is, this is negative. Why? Because this is the impulse. This gives you a negative value. Okay? The magnitude of the impulse is therefore positive. Why does it give you a negative value? Because this is the change in momentum of A. Okay, and the momentum of A acts in that direction because it slowed it down. And this, what we found, is a change of momentum of B, which is acts in this direction. Why? Because it's changed its direction. It was going this way, went that way. Okay, so there's your answer for question number two. Okay, I hope that was clear. Um, other questions from this particular paper can be found in the playlist that will appear in this section over here at the end of the video. Other questions? 
from the chapter of Momentum and Impulse in the playlist over here. You can subscribe to the channel by clicking on this link and you can watch a video here which will tell you how to use my channel effectively. Thank you for watching and see you soon.